It is amazing, and we've seen incredible images of people preparing to fight, to do whatever it takes to defend themselves and their city, and our next guest is one of those people. Anton Prebitkin is a graphic designer, but his heart is in music. He's a singer and the producer of the band Secret Avenue. He's with us from Lviv, but he's from Kiev, and we're going to talk to him about all of that. Anton, good morning and welcome. Uh, good we say morning. hello from Toronto and from Canada. Hello from Lviv. Listen, I can see you there. I can see someone else just in the background. Just tell us where you are and who's with you, who's staying there. Uh, this is my friend Nikita, who was driving us from Lviv to Kiev suddenly in the morning, like five days ago, when we were not totally prepared for leaving it. <laughs> But we're leaving, and that there you are here on this day seven. Look, I will talk about that trip in a second, but I want to talk about today first of all. How was last night? How was this morning in terms of, I don't know, did you hear any air raid sirens or anything? Uh, yeah, we've been hearing air raid sirens like four or five days. Sometimes it's five times a day. We have to go to the basement. But there's no shelling, and live probably live now is one of the most... Um, places that are, that are are untouched by any invasion, so it's pretty safe here. So that's why all people, uh, all evacuation is going in this direction to the west from all over the country. Yes. yes. When those sirens go off, and you said you go to the basement, tell us about where you go. Is it, is it a bunker? Is it a bomb shelter? Uh, it's like um, we're. We've been settled in the apartment of our friends, so it's their private uh, private basement, um, and it's pretty tough. It's um, but any, anywhere in Lviv, there are a lot of those um, bomb sh shelters, and so you can find it anywhere. They're all kept since the World War II. We never thought we we're going to use them again. But there you are using them. I think you sent us just a couple of seconds of, of where you go when the sirens go off. And here we are. Yes, we have all of you in that very small space just waiting. What are those moments like in that shelter? What does it feel like? Well, luckily for us, those guys who hosted us, they made some preparations. And we even have, have Wi-Fi there, and the water, and everything is fine. And the, the sky is clear above the Lviv, so, but we still got to go there anyway because it's a protocol. You have to do that. It might not be a drill. Thankfully, no, uh, yeah. nothing other than sirens yet, but it always could be, of course. I was mentioning in, in introducing yeah, you, Anton, yeah. that, that people have been doing these extraordinary things to get set to defend themselves, their families, their cities. And you've been one of those people. We have some, some pictures of, of you making Molotov cocktails. Can you tell me about that, please? Oh, yeah, it was our second day being in Lviv, and we can find places to, like, to sit, you know. It was so neurotic. We wanted to do, do some volunteering, so we, uh, we asked our friends, and they asked us to help to do those cocktails. Uh, this activity is very popular now in Ukrainian cities because... Those things are very effective against against uh, military machines. Uh, as you can see in some videos, it's really effective. Uh, so, so we started making them, and I think it's we made them over, over the top. <laughs> you made them over the top. What do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, like really explosive. Uh, too many of them. Yeah, we even those guys even wanted to send some to Kyiv, but we get an answer from Kyiv that they had enough and they can send us some of theirs. <laughs> That's amazing. So, Ukrainian people have been really... Set. You're all set. We're all set. Nothing is happening in Lviv yet, but every, every citizen is ready for anything. That's as, as all we can see, like motivation, anything, volunteering is high level. It's just amazing. Ready for anything. Does that include, in your case, Anton having to take off arms? Should it come to that? I don't think. From, I don't think there's 
anyone's going to surrender in the city. Never in, in Ukraine, basically. I don't think so. I mentioned what you do for a living. You're a graphic designer. You're a musician of a very popular band in Ukraine. And there you no, are. It's not day- popular. It's indie, it's indie band. Okay. And now I'm not really a graphic designer because I don't have a job anymore in Kiev. Well, I was just saying just, just a few days ago, that's what you were doing and how you were living. And then just now you're making Molotov cocktails. As you're doing that, I mean, what's going through your mind as you are creating a Molotov cocktail to blow up and defend yourself if need be? Uh, sometimes it feels like, uh, like we're waking up, but we can't wake up. <laughs> it's surreal, you know. It's pretty fun feeling, but it's okay. Yeah. We're all good. Tell me about the trip from Kiev to Lviv and your story. Um, it was a long story because it was a long trip. Basically, it takes like five and a half hours of driving, but uh, this time it took us like 25 hours and uh, like a half an hour of sleep. Uh, because it was like crazy traffic jam. Uh, leaving Kiev was like three hours long. Um, the first time in our lives we um, we get stuck in the traffic, which was seven hours long. Because people were leaving with their families. But eventually arrived there, and thankfully to this point to safety. But I'm sure you're watching what's going on elsewhere in your country. And you've seen, have you yes, seen sure. it closely? Every, every, every minute. minute. Yes. Every so you, minute. You've seen the pictures of the convoy making its way to the capital. You've probably seen the terrible images of Kharkiv and the attacks and the, and yeah, the targets. My girlfriend, she's from Kharkiv. Um, she's, she's kind of shocked right now. They're basically wiping it off the earth. Yes. It's terrible to watch. How do you think this is going to go? I think we're going to beat them up anyway. Now, what gives you the confidence to say that? I don't know. I just feel that way. And we, we don't have any choice. If we feel different, we're going to disappear, I think, eventually, if we don't think the other way. So what at this point with your friends there and your girlfriend and, um, and safety for now in Lviv, what is your hope at this moment, Anton? Um, our ideal hope is like to make things go back, but all of us, we do understand that uh, things are never, never going to be the, ch- in the same anymore in every aspect and every, in everything. And we have to live further. Now we're volunteering, trying to help, trying to settle people to uh, help them help those refugees, our friends, and people from other cities to um, to start their living and live somehow. It's so chaotic right now because uh, so many. Uh, so many people are running, running away right now, much more than it was like five days ago. Yes, we've been covering that too as part of the well, this story. This is Tatiana. Hi, Tatiana. <laughs> this is your girlfriend? No. No. It's just our friend your from Kiev. She's also a refugee, yeah. Oh, there. Well, listen, we share We just have home. two rooms. Two that's, rooms. That's why we are cruising around, you know. Yeah. For two rooms for 10 people but safety for now. Yeah, yeah. That's the most important thing. Anton, I thank you so much. We share the, the hope that you have for you and um, send very, from afar best wishes and, and really the best of thoughts. Yeah, for you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting.